This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Two killed at a bar in Hanover. Two men were shot and killed at a bar shortly after 3 p.m. in the community of Cousins Cove, Hanover on Sunday. Their identities have not yet been revealed. It is understood that the men were at the establishment when they were reportedly shot by gunmen. The men were pronounced dead at the Noel Holmes Hospital in the parish. Man with a checkered past chased and gunned down. Investigators from the Clarendon CIB are on high alert following the murder of a 33-year-old Textroy Favo Egbert, a resident of Savannah Cross in the parish. He was shot and killed by armed men on September 10, about 10.30 a.m. Reports are that Egbert, who was self-employed, was shot shortly after he drove to a wholesale in the vicinity of the Texaco gas station in Sandy Bay. As soon as he stopped his silver Toyota Probox motor car, another car drove up. Several men exited the vehicle and began shooting at him. Egbert ran, but he was chased and shot several times. The gunmen then left in the vehicle in which they had arrived. Egbert's body was taken to the Mapen Hospital, where he was confirmed dead. According to the police, Egbert is no stranger to them and was the target of several intelligence-led operations in the past. He was targeted by the police in connection with lottery scamming activities and illegal guns. He was arrested in 2018 for murder and identity theft in St. James and was reporting on condition of bond at the Old Harbor Police Station. He was also cited for receiving stolen goods from an appliance store in Maypen in 2017. Murder suspect shot dead by cops after Central Village killing. There was a major traffic snarl Sunday evening in the vicinity of Central Village in St. Catherine as police cordoned off the main road to process a scene after a series of events that left two men dead. According to reports, police intercepted gunmen who had just committed a murder in the vicinity of Central Village. The Corporate Communications Unit confirmed the murder. Gunmen killed a man along the main road and the police intercepted the man and killed one. The police are processing the scene right now, a CCU representative told the news. Motorcyclist killed in crash with a bus a motorcyclist was killed in a collision near the entrance of the Grand Palladium Hotel and the Spa on Point Main Road in Hanover Saturday night. The man, who is of dark complexion, has been identified only as a short boss. Reports from the police are that shortly before 11.30 p.m., the motorcyclist was traveling from the direction of Sandy Bay towards Lucy when on reaching the administrative office entrance to the hotel, a small bus entered his path. The motorcycle reportedly slammed into the right side of the bus. The driver died on the spot. This is the second fatal accident near the hotel this year. In June, 63-year-old vendor Lorna Kerr was mowed down by a Toyota Voxy bus as she served a fresh fruit from a Toyota Noah bus near the property. She died while receiving treatment at the Noel Holmes Hospital in the parish. Three surgeries down, burn victim steals herself for more. Teenager Adriana Leng, who sustained a severe burn wounds in a Westmoreland house fire that killed her three brothers last week, has undergone a series of life-saving operations at a hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. Stephen Josephs, the project manager of San Myrna Foundation, which has played a major role in getting help for Adriana, told the news that she has so far undergone three operations, the latest occurring on Saturday. The procedure lasted five and a half hours. Joseph said that while she is resting comfortably, Adriana is slated to have more operations in the coming days. She is a fighter and has been fighting through this ordeal, Joseph said. Joseph said that reggae music is being played in her hospital room to lift her spirits. Also playing at her bedside are voice notes sent by her school colleagues and other well-wishers. The 13-year-old is being cared for by lead doctor Saheed Hassan at the Joseph M. Stillburn Center in Atlanta. Adriana was flown to the United States for treatment on Thursday after the diaspora companies in Jamaica, the government and others rallied to secure the U.S. $40,000 in airlift funding. Josephs has thanked all those who have rallied to provide assistance. 
Jamaica's Consul General in Miami, Oliver Mayer, under whose jurisdiction Georgia Falls, has also been monitoring her progress and has been providing updates to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Mayer said that he is in daily contact with both Joseph's and the hospital. Adriana is the lone survivor of the tragic inferno that took the lives of her three younger brothers, nine-year-old Adriano Leng and the seven-year-old twins Jordan and Jaden Leng, and totally destroyed their home in Westmoreland two Sundays ago. Adriana had been admitted to the University Hospital of the West Indies Surgical Intensive Care Unit. St. Elizabeth Police List a Farmer as a Person of Interest in Murder the St. Elizabeth police have released the name of a man they say is a person of interest in a murder in the parish. He's the 39-year-old farmer Duane Morrison, aliases Sharkey and Rickmond. According to a police investigation, on September 9, Everton Spence, a 34-year-old farmer of Treasure Beach, was at home when a dispute developed between a female and a Morrison. Investigators allege that during the dispute, Morrison shot Mr. Spence several times. Commanding officer for the St. Elizabeth Police Division, Superintendent Robert Chin, says Morrison is a person of interest in the murder incident. Morrison is being asked to surrender to the police. Superintendent Chin urged the members of the public to assist in locating Morrison, who is of dark complexion, medium build, and about 5 feet 7 inches in height. Investigators say Morrison is known to frequent several cash pot outlets and the various communities in the parish alongside several male and female associates. Illegal Firearms Seized in Westmoreland Another illegal gun has been removed from the streets. The Westmoreland police on Saturday seized a high-powered rifle at a breadfruit tree lane in Savannah Lamar. The police seized a Colt AR-15 rifle during an operation in breadfruit tree lane on Darling Street. The weapon was found hidden on the roof of a house. A magazine containing 30 rounds of ammunition was also seized. No one was arrested. The West Marland police have been keeping a close watch on the area, the base of the Darling Street and Delete gangs which are engaged in an ongoing conflict. Councillor calling for NWA to rethink a position on attending meetings at a parish level. A councillor in the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation has raised a concern about a proposed plan which would see representatives of the National Works Agency, NWA, discontinuing attendance at meetings of municipal corporations island-wide. Councillor Edwin Marr of the Landway Division highlighted the concern during a recent interview with the news. Councillor Marr insisted the proposed move would not be helpful to the corporation and the by extension members of the public. We were made to understand, based on letters sent to the, to, to the, the, the ministry in Kingston, that NWA no longer responds nor attend any meeting at the parish council level because um, they are not obligated to. Because of that, the parish is left in a, with a, a vacuum in terms of information filtering because we can't get any information as as elected representative to bring back to our communities concerning the infrastructural undertaking in the parish meanwhile councillor mar is calling for the intervention of minister without portfolio in the ministry of economic growth and the job creation everaldo warmington in the brewing impasse mr mar's concerns come on the heels of recent roadblocks across st thomas over the poor state of some roads and a long-running road rehabilitation project. Manhunt launched for suspect in death of three-year-old. The Saint and police have launched a manhunt for a suspect in connection with the death of a three-year-old boy last week. The boy died on Wednesday, just days after he was found with a head wound at his home in Stairtown, Saint Anne. It is reported that on September 2. The child's mother left him in the care of her 24-year-old boyfriend at her home. On her return, she found the little boy with a wound to the head in a semi-conscious state. The news was informed that the man told the mother that the child fell and hit his head. The boy was rushed to the hospital and later transported to the Bustamante Hospital in Kingston for emergency surgery. He died on Wednesday. The news understands that the 24-year-old man has not been seen since the incident. A senior investigator told the news that investigators want to question him about the circumstances which led to the child sustaining the head wound.
Three shot at one fatally in Westmoreland. Three persons were shot at one fatally as the bloodletting continued in Westmoreland yesterday. The three victims were shot in an attack in George's Plain in Frome. The deceased has been identified as the 36-year-old Kevin Hamilton of Jane Marks Road in Frome. The other victims have been hospitalized. It is reported that about 12.50 yesterday morning, the men had just left the posh nightclub located along the George's Plain Main Road when they were attacked by armed thugs. A 17-year-old boy who was also in their company was also shot at but escaped injury. The gunmen fled on a motorcycle. West Marland has been grappling with an upsurge in shootings and murders over the past few weeks. Five persons have been shot three fatally in the last 24 hours in the parish. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson visited Westmoreland on Thursday and promised to deploy more police personnel to help stem the bloodletting. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.